I want to say, Ray, I'm sorry. I hope you find another podcast to fill your life with joy. My my last words would be, uh, Ray, if you're listening, I get it. Hey, you know, I'm always looking for somebody to talk to. Number two, Happy Hour News team, I'm there for you on Thursday nights. I'm having a rough day, let me tell you. So anyway. So everyone who listens to our show and might be sad we're leaving, listen to Happy Hour News team. They're still going. Thank you very much for this uh, very interesting journey that has happened for the last nearly two and a half years. We appreciate you the most, and that's why we mentioned Happy Hour News team the most, because they were the most giving and caring of all of our listeners and viewers, regardless of Greg's siblings. We do appreciate everybody who did listen. We're still surprised the fact that there were more than two out there who did. You know, I want to thank all of the people from a couple of years ago in the Far East and in third world countries that put all the fake reviews on for us and made us in the top 2% of podcasts in the world. I want to thank Greg and Brendan very, very much for putting up with me through this entire time. I want to thank TikTok for banning us a couple of times because that made a couple of interesting episodes. I want to thank all of our guests that we've ever had, regardless of Brendan and Greg's horrible horrible rudeness towards you if you weren't what they were their cup of tea i appreciated you at the very least i want to thank the publicists who gave us guests who gave us people to talk to really appreciate you guys i have no idea what the future holds for any of us you will never hear us again that's the end of the show this is the last one Regardless, I want to thank everybody again very much for having listened to us all this time. Um, and that is uh, the law offices of Quibble, Squabble, and Bicker. We're signing out. Behold, trapped in a hellscape of their own invention, socially unaware old white men bound by the pretense of being fake lawyers yet knowing no law, no exquisite Latin terminology, they are inexplicably compelled to quibble over minutia, squabble over triflings and bicker like those who value their backyards far too highly without even knowing the difference between an easement and an alleyway. At this very moment, you have entered the heart of the law offices of quibble, squabble, and bicker. Let's get started. You two, you begin the episode however you choose to begin it. This is just to preface it for everybody coming in. This is the last episode of the Law Offices Quibble, Squabble, and Bicker, unless we have a hair up our, our ass somewhere down the future and we decide to do another one. But for now, it's done. So, if Brendan, Gre- Brendan Greg, say your pieces. I'm just going to say, dun, 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 dun. You know, I'm just going to say this. I was always kind of a studio musician in this in this three piece in that you guys started the band and then decided, yeah, you know, we could use a bass player. And I came along and, and I, I just kind of stood around. Suddenly you guys had side projects. Greg's doing a comic book podcast. You're doing some crazy sci fi YouTube channel. And I just went. Man, you know, this has a very eerie, familiar feeling to it. And so here we are. <laughs> well, the sci-fi um, news channel didn't happen until like a month ago. So, I mean. I know. I'm just saying. Two years I'm just now. saying. You know, you start, you know, you start, you know, I don't know. I just I just was just getting a vibe, you know. You're vibe. blossoming, Matt. And he doesn't want to get in the way of your blossoming. I don't want to get in the, yeah. I don't want to get in the way of either one of you guys. I'm just going to, you know. I have I have some other podcasts that say, could you be our third guy? And I'm like, maybe, I don't know. You know, really, are, they, are they clamoring for you when this is all over? There's like the the offers are rolling in for you, Brennan. You know, they were thinking three three bears, one cave might be a good idea. Um, you know, there's a few I heard that a happy hour news team was headhunting you if you could be a third member. I think they would have if I was still in Florida. I could have been a Florida correspondent, but I don't think yeah. they have any interest in Portland. <laughs> oh, you know, there's a new uh, there's a new Florida man headline that happened yesterday. Uh, Florida man makes announcement is running for president. <laughs> Did you hear that? Nah. Well, I mean, I heard that he's running for president. I don't think of him as a Florida, Florida man. man. He is, but technically he's a New Yorker. Come on. Well, no, he's he's. Embrace Florida. And Florida's embraced him, although DeSantis hasn't quite. I was going to say, the, the dictator over there is not real happy to have him there, so I don't know. He might yeah. put him on a plane with the next batch of homeless people to... Uh, I think know. DeSantis is happy to have Trump because that gives people something to compare him to. Yeah, he's not that bad. Compared to like, oh, I'm not Trump. Come on. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Because the winds are definitely turning against Trump. But anyway... Have you guys I, seen the Mike Pence interview? I saw part of it. 
Um, but you know, intense. that's not what this episode's about. This is episode isn't about it. This episode is about the death of the law offices of quibble, squabble, and bicker, the the demise and the reason for that. And basically it comes down to Brendan and I are bullies, and we've affected negatively Greg's mental health, and he can't take it anymore. And that's really why this is all ending, because he's a fragile, fragile man. And uh, I'm a hothouse flower. His his uh, his relatives have uh, beaten him down into submission and stated that he should not hang out with us anymore because we are ruining him mentally and my socially. relatives are the only ones who listen to this show. Even my ex brother in law is a religious listener. Uh huh. He Either way, them. well, th- these are things that came out when you were much drunker and don't remember. Um, no, no, I, I remember. You, but you, you know, gave the truth. Things. I'll try. I forgot. I you remember everything that happens when no, you're no, drunk. Everything I don't. I in know, full I'm photographic I detail. Just know what I felt. You remember it all with like not, very saying, specific information. I'm saying there's I no way you ever get anything wrong when you're incredibly blackout no, drunk. Do. Hmm. And there's no way you ever get anything wrong when you're sober. I get things wrong all the time. There you go. We're on Constantly. The same but I'm saying we're, we're on the same screen. I'm not guaranteeing that I could like write verbatim what I said the other night when I was drunk <laughs> last Wednesday after the last mm-hmm. podcast. But yeah. I could tell you how I felt for a year and how I've wanted to extricate myself at least for a little time from the show. Yeah. And it never got around to it. Yeah. But I finally was just like, no. And I think Brendan feels the same way. It's. He feels the same way as you. He doesn't have the same well, issues as you. No, no. I, have, I have different issues. It's really not I, the bullying. I think that's good comedy when you guys pick on me. I mean, that's our shtick. Uh-huh. So what's the so what's the real deal then, Greg? I just what's the truth, Greg? It's not that fun anymore. Yeah, I get that. I, it's almost like a chore. Wednesday at work, I'm like, I gotta do the podcast. I can just go home and do whatever the fuck I want to do. Yeah, I'm a lazy man. I'm sorry, I'm very lazy. No. No, that, I get it. You picked a really interesting line of work for a lazy man. Dishwashing is not that hard. I know, it's, but you stand on your feet like eight hours no. a day, and you're like constant. Yeah, that's not lazy work. You know, it's weird though. I actually like washing dishes, so it's like not that hard. It's like oh, I, I believe it. I get to wash dishes today. <laughs> it's you know the thing about washing dishes, having done it many, 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 many years ago. Um, you mean you it, don't wash your dishes anymore, Brendan? No, professionally speaking. Oh, he licks them clean. Like I had a job where that <laughs> hires local for, cats. Yeah, I don't have many dishes to do anymore. That's a whole different story. But yes, uh, it, it it's 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 mindless. It's really mindless. You know what you're doing. You're good at yeah. it. You know it doesn't take a huge skill. Sometimes you get a challenge. Something gets a little crusty. That state between too hard and too easy. That's the zone. That's when you know you're in the zone. So that's sometimes what's it's like when you're totally backed up. There's lots of shit to do, but it's still like there's not pressure on you. It's not like like when you're cooking. Like when I was a line cook at Burgerville for ten years, it's like they need these ten sandwiches now. Everyone's hungry and they're pissed yeah, off. And you, and you have to make sure they're correct and they're not raw and they're done exactly. properly. And nobody cares. Dishes, cleaning dishes, you don't even have to actually clean them. Yeah, uh, I, I'm, I'm kind you of can just move them along and just tell people they're clean. And if they go, you know no, there's a speck on here, I'm like, yeah, you're blind. Then gaslight them and tell them that they're they're wrong. Yeah, that's that's I, just I, the imperfection of the China. Yeah, <laughs> I, I used to have that kind of anxiety. We had a payroll of 30 people, you know, 35, 40 people that I had to meet every month. And I knew that. Wait, wait, did you say every month? I said every month. Uh, it sounded like month. Month. I just wasn't quite sure what that word was. Well, it's pretty important that we change the whole point of conversation so we can explore Matt's mishearing of something. There, Have you not figured the, that out yet, Brendan? I know, I mean, but, it's but taken you all this time to come no, to that conclusion. No, no, no not at all. I mean, I'm it certainly saying, isn't the first time you've made that observation. No, I know it isn't. That's what I'm saying, <laughs> you know. But I just, I feel that uh, well, maybe it would be better if we did our own things. If anyone wants to even do that. And the reason why is because I feel like there's literally creative differences. What? Yeah. What are the creative differences? Well, first of all, I wouldn't do a show anything like this because the show doesn't make any sense. It has no, I mean, we've added some things to it and see, (laughs) this is the joke. That's what, see, this is why I say I'm not, I wasn't in on the original joke of this. So I just sort of show up at the party and everybody's like, yeah, I'm like, it's kind of weird. And everybody's like, well, yeah, that's what the point is. And I'm like, uh, okay. <laughs> so we've added some bits. We've added waspy soda pop. 
the sponsor, you know, we've added some things, you know, yeah. um, but it hasn't gone anywhere. Not that any one of us, except you, honestly, has put in any real effort other than Wednesday night. So, but I wouldn't know where we would go if I wanted to put more effort into it because this, this show, I was, this is how I was explaining the show. This show's all about Greg. This is about <laughs> Greg because yeah, Greg and, and would Greg and I would have these long conversations and we would have these funny conversations and they were hilarious. And I just thought, you know, we should record them. And now there's a pandemic and let's do it. That's how the show was pitched to me. And I went, sure, I got it's, nothing. It's I'm pretty I'm accurate. In a, I'm, I'm in a, I'm in a, you know, 30 year marriage that's so slowly spiraling out of control. Why not add this to it? <laughs> and then you realize that I wasn't even funny. No, I think you're both funny. I think you're both funny in different ways. And I think that there is a certain amount of unexpressed hostility that sort of rises up between you, just like there's a little bit of unexpressed hostility that rises up between Matt and I. What? It's kind of expressed. Fuck I don't know you, if it's Brandon. unexpressed. You've sometimes <laughs> expressed your hostility. I, yes, People lie. Yeah. I, I would say it is more expressed. You're right. But, you know, I'm just there saying. isn't a lot of passive aggressiveness that happens in this podcast, I have to say. I mean, <laughs> I mean we, no. the aggressiveness does occur. There is, I mean, there is the passive aggressive stuff, but that's what Greg's for. So, right. That was a passive aggressive statement, Greg, in case I don't remember sure. it that way. <laughs> Right. No. So anyway, so so <laughs> that was how I that's how I showed up here. And then I stuck with it because, like I said, I had nothing better to do on Wednesday night. And it was fun to talk to people for about nothing and make jokes and be silly and be crude, okay. honestly. So the creative differences are more like there was no creativity in general. I don't want to say that because I don't think that's fair. I don't think it's that binary to use a word. I don't think that there was no creativity. I think there was a creativity, but I think the effort for more creativity or getting together on the same page and deciding what to do, we never seem to kind of be able to come together for that. I'm not saying that was anyone's fault or whatever, or that we even tried that hard, but it didn't seem like we were building something. It just felt That's like we true. were doing something. We were never building something because Greg didn't want to build anything. Greg, I, Greg didn't even really want to do this to begin with. No, I, I liked the beginning. I really had fun. It was the pandemic. There's nothing to do. <laughs> right. But the thing was, though, is that, you know, it, even before the pandemic, we kind of talked about, like, doing, like, a YouTube Yeah, thing I didn't want to like do that. it. Yeah. Didn't want to do it. Didn't want to do it. I got into the idea, just like my even shittier podcast, my comic book podcast, I kind of got in the idea of, like, wow, we're going to be the worst podcasts out there. It's kind of it's just like I was in bands. That just sucked. But it almost gave me more energy to be like, let's keep going. No band is as shitty as us. Let's just keep going out there. For the and shittiest not quitting. band in Portland. Alan, the one thing I have learned about getting into the podcast arena is that there are so many worse podcasts than us. I mean, so many. I was like, there's a multitude that are just just worthless, you know. Mm. So I was I was totally okay with us being above those. Well, yeah. 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 But anyway, but either way, it wasn't really a comparison thing so much for just wondering if we would ever find our tribe more than anything, like people yeah. who would like align with our senses of humor or just our sensibilities in general and see if anybody was really out there who, you know, gave a crap about whatever we talked about. So we found a couple of guys in North Dakota who don't know where they are now. I don't know if they're still listening anymore. If they're not, it's all good. It's winter but, time. Uh, right. I mean, they're, they're going to start. To, I guess what we're going to have to start doing now is we're going to have to start like making lots of calls to their show to make them prop them up, you know. Yeah. And we'll give sure. them. We could. We'll give them our listeners. We'll sell them our uh, client base. Oh yeah, <laughs> you you got a list of those, do you, Greg? Huh? Do you have the list? Yeah, Matrez, Maria. <laughs> yeah, it's it's, it's on Ray, his cell phone. It's his sister. Was, it's Paula. My brother. Just and Paula. Send all the all of his family contacts to Shanti, <laughs> and we'll be done. <laughs> they'll all get them at least at least on their podcast they have people that interact whenever they're doing a, a live broadcast you know yeah whereas for us it's very rare when well, we occurs. do sometimes where some random person will say gobble gooba gooba like well, some yeah. random thing on tiktok but, right. but again you know the the happy hour news guys they got it it's the, the show has a concept it's their happy hour news so they're sitting there and they're getting drunk and they're reading headlines is yeah. this the most original idea in the universe no but yeah. do you know how many 
YouTubers have a million subscribers who just sit around and watch other YouTube videos and comment on them more than I can count. Yeah. The so, fact is we didn't go into this with any structure. It right. was uh, essentially just a bantering format mm -hmm. and there wasn't like an end goal. Like what are we trying to achieve and how are we going to do it? Because I knew that Greg would never get behind something like that because he, he didn't want work. He didn't want to work. We wanted a yeah. pizza. Well, that was the idea in the beginning, whenever we were making a little bit of money yeah. from Anchor, you know, and then that all ended. So we made 50 bucks from Anchor, and so we had a pizza show. So yeah. that happened. But so we w succeeded as a podcast. Yeah, but I mean, it was like nobody was really willing to put forth effort in terms of marketing or um, like honing oh. in on what oh. our, on, on our client base or demographics and to truly like make it happen, which is totally fine, you know, because it requires a lot of work, effort, energy, and money to make those things happen. But, you know, that's kind of takes us to the stage, but you know, if Greg is saying that things aren't fun anymore, the question really becomes why isn't Greg making things fun anymore? I don't know how to. Oh, come on. That's just, I don't have much. That's fun a cop out, Greg. I don't know how to make fun. I, I would have, be having fun right now if I knew how to make fun. Well, I've lost how, the capacity to have fun. I'm like Livia Soprano. <laughs> the capacity of Poor joy. Yo, where's that yeah, sound effect? Like I need to Livia. find that one. It's the capacity of joy is lessened in me as I get older. Like, it's hard to even find joy anywhere. And that is why I hate your alcoholism, Greg, because it has driven no, that that's out of you. The way I have. I'm just saying it's deadened you. It's deadened you to the Maybe finer has, things in life. But I had yeah. a lot of things in my life. I was deadened before. before and it I becomes like it. this one thing now that is like affecting you negatively. And it's bad. When I was in my early 20s, total sober as a church match. I was straight edge. I was like Ian Mackay. I was. I don't know what an Mackay. Ian Mackay is. Is that a bird? He invented straight edge, basically. <laughs> what is straight edge again? Minor Not threat. Straight. It's a minor threat. Well, That's he's the band. Of minor the threat. band is minor threat. Fugazi, oh. minor threat. You're a music guy. Come on, you must know these guys. Doesn't anyone no, know Fugazi? He doesn't know that kind of music. Karaoke? Fug Fugazi, I've heard of. Okay, mm -hmm. same guy, different band. That was his. That was his band after Minor Threat broke up. Yeah. Okay. But the minor, the it was like a punk band. Then. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's just it's history. Even like in the early '80s, there's a movement in punk rock, straight edge. Where mm. punks who were known for just getting drunk all the time and taking pills, they were like, no, we're going to be fucking straight edge. We're not going to drink. We're not going to muddle our brains. No Doesn't baby aspirin. Nothing. No. Nothing. Okay. Oh, and, and like the, part of, the part that Greg isn't mentioning is also no sex. Oh, yeah. But they changed that a little later, I think. I bet they did. Yeah. <laughs> when they had sex. Like, it oh, all changed. Oh, this, no, we're putting this so in. So why are they better. called minor threat? If That's the name were, of the band. That's if the they were the against band. all of those things. Because they're, uh, they they're a small minor. Yeah. They're a bunch of minority. teenagers oh. who were a threat, but they weren't that big because they were four teenagers playing the oh, hardcore. Got it. Okay. And they they like created this movement of just being clean and sober. Yeah, they popular. Were they, they like big fans of Ted Nugent or something? Because that was like his thing. Yeah, what? I'm sure they were huge Ted Nugent fans. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> That's I have no, I would, I would no idea. <laughs> they could have been sure. We've really kind of gotten off. So, so know. that means that Greg was a big Ted Nugent fan and probably still is. You know, I never, I loved classic rock growing up, even when I got into hardcore. Because I mean, I was basically in a hardcore band a few years after Ian Mc, Mackay and Meyer Threat. I was like early eighties. I was in a hardcore band, but I still listen to classic rock, and I still thought Ted Nugent always sucked. Cat Scratch Fever is a shit song. That song's just moronic. And that's, and that's, kind of and that's his best. I know. That's his hit. And it sucks. It's like the most moronic, like, dab, 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 blah. It's so bad. It's not even catchy. No, it's all. Okay. I don't, I, don't, nobody, I don't know how anybody knows the name of that song at all because it's so uncatchy. But I do love that he has a, that he coined the term doing the Wango Tango. That's a great. Well, that's because he made that a song. The song was called yeah, Wango Tango. Right. But he made that up. I don't. I don't think ever, anyone ever said that before. He. Well, he also had the song. Was it Wang Dang Sweet Poon Tang as well? That's a great and, title. And didn't he have the one about my thirteen-year-old niece is actually my girlfriend? Well, that was a big <laughs> hit of his too, right? Oh, I, I thought it was that. Jerry Lee Lewis. 
Yeah, it was a cover. Oh, yeah. It was a cover of Jerry Lee Lewis. He just updated it. You know, but you know what you gotta audiences. give you gotta give Ted Nugent credit because he had a live album where it was recorded in a bunch of cities and it's called Intensities in Ten Cities. That is a fucking great pun. And you know, if he did it now, it would be intent cities in ten cities. <laughs> intensities. Yes, in Portland. Yeah. You get like well, a third pun out of that those terms. In Welcome to Portland. <laughs> <laughs> Intent cities. Anyway, so you know, I had kind of wanted to do like a uh, uh, a leading up to a final episode and ending with like a, a wrap up at the end of December and can like every episode between now and then to like kind of highlight different aspects of our two and a half year journey. But you know, Greg had thrown out this idea that he was going to go on a sabbatical whenever it was like all going to be ending, which doesn't make any sense, especially if we're going to be ending the end becomes the sabbatical. So it's like, you know, obviously he just really, 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 really doesn't want to do this anymore. And I definitely would not like to do another month of reliving our past episodes, like a, a very special episode of <laughs> like Seinfeld. You know, we could we could bring out like the old sponsors that were never produced in any way and like we address play, uh, those. We could play Green Day's Time of Our Life. Song we could do one. like the first two episodes we ever did, but add Brendan to it because he never got to participate in the first two episodes. We could dub and, him in. No, we could have actually had that conversation, but with Brendan this time around. That could okay. have been something we could have done too. That's but like now George Lucas with the remaking Star Wars, putting in <laughs> am, am, am I Brendan is Jar Jar Banks. Yeah, yes. yes. <laughs> no, he'd be uh Yes, Oba. Amasa. That sounds a good idea, Matt. <laughs> He'd be like, hand shot first. He'd change the whole thing. I'd be like, that didn't happen in the original Star Wars. Hand shot first. You don't know that reference? It's a big Oh, nerd. from the... Because uh, the, they the, changed the, it the when they remade it. Cantina. Yeah, because yeah, uh. Greedo against Greedo. They were like, they wanted to make, oh, hand's not that bad. He wouldn't shoot a guy first. He was defending himself. And they changed the laser blast so Han only shot in self-defense. Right. Was Which it pronounced tweet? Han or Han? Oh, sorry. I think it's Han. You're right. Han. Okay. Han. It's, it's, it's Han Solo. Han Solo. Solo. Han Solo. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's Solo. right. That's how it's pronounced. But so this particular episode, we will not see Waspy Soda Pop. Um, it, no, is, Waspy Soda. it is done. And um, we'll do an Ask Greg, but it's not going to be a pleasant one. Um Oh, and the uh, legal ramifications of leaving a podcast <laughs> where your contract is due, breaking a contract like any of them have been pleasant, honestly. But, um, but anyway, we'll just kind of like see how this goes and where it goes to by the end. But this will be the Here final episode. I mean, nobody's like watching right now on YouTube. I just want to say, I'm all wine today for a special occasion. I figured I'd get Red fancy. blend with spices. Ooh, that sounds yeah, spices. Nice. I mean, he, put it in the microwave. He's it's gone like, medieval on us. I know it's like mead. So I'm not going to do any heavy production on the this episode either. <laughs> Afterwards, I'm basically just going to put in a beginning and an ending, and uh, you know, just kind of like end it because what's the point, really, right? Now, what's the, the point of whipper. making it try to be a little bit better when it's all well, over? Well, you tried that for two and a half years, and it didn't seem to. No, nah, we kept trying. I mean, it got a little bit better. We were, I mean, at least I was enjoying it a little bit more because of that, you know. But it's the effort one puts in that makes things a little bit better. It was fun writing the sponsors. If you just, don't put the effort in, then it's not going to be as much fun. I wrote some sponsors. I put effort into those because I'm a bad writer. So it would take You're not hour. a bad writer. You have well, had some it very... takes me a long time. And, you know, if there were more episodes ahead of us, we could get into how good of a writer you actually are, Greg. <laughs> we could interview me about my writing. That's right. But there is a sponsor because Brendan had put a sponsor together for this episode. And I'm very oh. curious as to um, what the sponsor is. So um, I'm going to give, give Brendan the floor Hold here. On, let, me, let me get it. Let me get my my notes up. Yes. Get your sponsor nose up. <sighs> All right. So tonight, this very special episode of The Law of Sism, Quibble, Squabble, and Bicker, is brought to you by the newest and bestest app out there, Huffery. Done with dating apps? Tired of sitting alone and talking to yourself? Tired of putting up with people that don't get you? 
sick of relationships altogether, but still need some sort of interaction? Well, welcome to Puffery. Download the app, fill out our short questionnaire about yourself, and Puffery will match you with your puffologist within 24 hours. Your puffologist is trained and certified by the University of Puffington in the United Kingdom. There, the long and storied art of puffery has been a tradition since 1647. Through our exclusive and completely secure app and online interface, you can schedule puff sessions with your puffologist and the length, at the length and frequency that you require. At puffery, you're always in the driver's seat. Your puff session will consist of your puffologist spending the time to pull you up in the manner you require. It could be laughing at your dad jokes and puns. It might be a good time of hoots and hollers as you go off about the political injustices of the man. Or maybe you just need a kind voice to reassure you you're not actually crazy. Whatever you need, your pathologist is there for you. And if you download the app and sign up today, you will also be enrolled in the Please Shut the Fuck Up Foundation's monthly Other Shit to Do Box program at no additional cost. Puffery. We get you. Puffery. I remember Puff, the just... uh, Shut the Fuck Up Foundation from a few months ago. <laughs> mm -hmm. they, I think they sponsored us one episode, didn't they? Yeah, it was a joint, you know, it was sort of a referral deal that I got yeah. out of those guys. Yeah, that was the sponsor that was made just to attack me, I remember, if I remember. <laughs> Aren't most of them? This one was no. kind of made to attack both you and me, Greg. Wait, no. was it Puffologist or Pathologist? You were saying Puffologist. Oh, P-U-F-F. Puff. As in, As in Puffery. Like the magic dragon. Like the magic dragon. Or like in Puffery. As in Puffery. That was well, the name of the How app. it started was saying Puffery, Greg. Yeah. So it wasn't yeah. an as if, it was actually. You're saying pathologists who work for Puffery. But he was well, they, were, they, were, they were puffologists. Puffologists. Okay. Yeah, because you can't really say that. puff scientists. So you'd have to do something that's a little easier to pronounce. Puffologists seem better than puff scientist or yes. puff doctor? Puff doctor? Puff doctor. That's, 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 puff that's puff horrible. Actually, that's I think Greg worst. is a puff doctor. Puff anyway. trologists, like a yes, yes, no, <laughs> none, none of these things are meant to <laughs> attack you, Greg. I'm sorry if you felt that way, but that was not the case. We were in the middle of a political season, and it wasn't just you; it was everybody. It was everywhere I turned. People were like, "It's the end of the world if you didn't get out and vote." And you know, and let me tell you, did you see what they said about you know Elon Musk and Twitter and and I'm just like, please. Just shut, this is so unimportant. Go shut the fuck up. Go go teach a kid to read. Go go make cookies for somebody. <laughs> Do something. Whittle go a teach stick. a kid to read. Find a kid who can't read and teach him how to read. There's yeah. tons of them. I can tell you. I've they're out there. Of, they're out there. They're all over. Find a kid who can read and teach him how to read again in a better way. Fine. That you're not be reading right. Find that a kid be... who knows how to read and teach him a different language. Yeah. All of these would be infinitely better. Than sending me text messages about some political thing I don't care about. Who is or... sending you these text messages, Brandon? Who are these people who are harassing you in this way? People that friends. I know. Friends. Oh. What kind of friends are sending you texts like that, though? People that want to con convert me, convince me, get an attaboy. People who need a puffery. I'm, I'm not <laughs> that guy. I know. I hope. I hope. For and you all think of they them. would know that by now? You would think that, well, if the numbers are sort of dwindling, <laughs> yeah, I think they figured out I'm here. I had to, yeah. I had to tell one guy, I was like, I was being just, you know, weird with him because I was bored. He's like, come on, what are, where are you, what are you? And then I was like, I'm in Portland. And he's like, why? And so then, so then I was getting off and finally I was just like, dude, enough. I don't care about any of this. <laughs> I had one person text me a video to a YouTube channel of a woman who was convinced that the fibers on her uh, clothes were self-aware government tapeworms. Oh, that's well. Thing. How that's would real. you know that they're not, Brendan? Oh, she had all the. She had all the. She had. She was sitting there going like this, going, "See, it's moving," and I'm like. It's called static electricity. You <laughs> bitch. Jesus Christ. So that's why static electricity is a conspiracy of the government yeah. to make yeah. spoons like stick to your arm. Like this is the dumbest. Yeah. If it was, it's the dumbest conspiracy ever. Okay, so listen to the plan. This we're is gonna how we're gonna these, fix it. 
microscopic thread monsters that are self-aware. They're like a living thing. We're going to spread them through the clouds, and then they will fall to the earth so they can burrow themselves into middle-aged white ladies' skin. To find out about their cleansing habits. Yeah. What lotion are you using today, this Karen? Is, this, this, this thing isn't working at all. What we really need is <laughs> little fiber optic worm robots. You know, I got that COVID vaccine uh, three times. You know, I've got the boosters. And, like, look at this. I'm fucking magnetized. Look at this. The lighter sticking to my forehead. Right. See that? I see that. Yes, Greg. Before yes, I Greg. Got Brenda and I see that. Okay. But, I'm but, saying but, that's proof. My but point sure. is, Greg, it was not. Just not a about strong you. magnet. It, it was about everybody. It was so much about everybody. I actually went out and bought the domain. Please shut the fuck up. Dot co. <laughs> you own That's it. Co. Yeah, I couldn't get calm. I got Could... co and I got xyz. That's why in the sponsor I said xyz. Um, and I'm gonna start building a website probably once I get back from Florida. Like um, in the next. Please year. shut the fuck up. Yeah, I'm really going to figure out a way to get, I figure I can get some really cheap, like, kid, like, kits, like, do stuff kits, and it'll be a gag gift, you know what I mean? And I'll charge 20 bucks, and Ian knows how to drop ship stuff out of a factory in Wuhan or whatever he does, so I'll just set it up with him. Drop ship some COVID. From Wuhan. You're going to be fucking bombed by 4chan in a month. You're going to have I all these so. I'm not I, shutting the fuck up in a month. I know. I, Attacking I, your site. I, I hope that would happen. That would he wants that much notoriety. <laughs> that would be the greatest thing ever. So, Greg, at what point did this stop being fun for you? When was, like, the tipping point? The thing where you went, ah, eh, this is not any good anymore. Well, at the at first when we kept having, like, all these guests who were uh, lame. Yeah. And, and then we got away from that. And we could just talk. Yeah. Yeah, and then I don't know. A few months later, I was just like, I don't know. It just became a chore. Yeah, I can't put my finger on it. Was it when you were dating Jen? Was that when it really happened? It was before then. I mean, I, I think at least a year ago, I first. Well, said a year to... ago, you were dating her. No. Yeah, because you guys went. Oh, that's what just started. You're right. Yeah, it was even more than a year ago. I was saying. I said I'm. Like, I wanted to leave the podcast when we had all those crappy guests on. You were like, I ah, will change it soon. Yeah. Well, so I changed it because you didn't you didn't want them on anymore. So that's why I think she... See, I was willing to do things for you, Greg. I was. I know. And I did. changed. I changed for you, Greg. I know. And I changed for you. Did you? How did you change for me, Greg? You didn't stop drinking heavily. I, that wasn't part of the deal. <laughs> People come on the podcast to see me get drunk. That's a big draw for us. Oh, that's where we're getting all of our viewers from. Your sister like, comes on to watch you be drunk. It's like she people feels go to see a circus good about geek. you. It's like, you know, I'm like the circus geek. It's like, wow, that guy's a fucking loser. I mean, there's, there's, you know, there's people that have Twitch channels with hundreds of thousands of viewers that do, you know, arguably dumber shit than that, honestly. So what but are you going to do? What are you guys going to do with your Wednesdays once this is all over? What's your plan? Well, I'm well, going to start my YouTube channel if I can figure out how to post it. <laughs> you had six other days of the week you could have worked on your YouTube channel, Greg. What have you done? I'm tired. I work. <laughs> I'm an old man. So you're not going to be tired on Wednesdays. And that's when you'll be able to work on it. I'll have an extra day. Yeah. It'll be nice. <laughs> an extra day to ignore it, you mean? Well, no, I'm not ignoring it. I just don't have the technological know-how to take a video on my phone and then send an email of it because it's too big a file. Uh huh. It won't get off my. I thought you had a camera. If you have a phone, you have a little plug here. You have an iPhone. Not not if it's an iPhone. They don't have those plugs anymore. Yeah, you plug it in here, and then you plug it into a computer, and you can move the stuff off. Or well, if it's did, an iPhone. He doesn't have a computer. He has a tablet that he thought was a I don't a have that jack thing you're talking about. I need that jack, I guess. A jack that would connect my phone to my iPad. Anything, Any cord you have that charges your phone, if it's an iPhone, it's the same cord. It's exactly the same cord. The same cord that charges your phone also transfers data. You know, you if, realize you're going to have to leave, so. go to his apartment, Brendan, and show him step by step to make this work. I'm just, okay. I'm just for like a week. Well, actually, here's a charger, right? Look, here's the here's one end of the cord. 
which doesn't fit in my phone. No. Or my computer. Where yeah. does this go? So How do one? I work I need a special out. cord. I this was raised a, in the 1870s. It's and called I did a, a, <laughs> it's called a lightning cord. So this is the part that fits into your phone. Yeah. And then the part that goes into it, usually they have a little square, which is this, which is USB. I don't have that on my iPad. You don't have a USB on your iPad? No, it's just got the little charger hole, and that's it as far as holes. No, it, well, then you, he would just need like the the one that has two ends, like the one that you have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you had a, a little doggle, whatever, a that, USB C, I believe it might be. Possibly. But I would like to think that theory. I could send a five minute video somehow, figure it out. I know there's a way. I send one minute videos to people all the time. It's got to be a way to send a longer video. Yeah, it's called it's box. Out. Dot, it's called uh, what's it called? Uh, Dropbox. dot com. Dropbox. Dropbox. I'll look yeah. into that. Where you can upload bigger files to it, and then you can go to that website and then download things from that website to your computer or wherever. Okay. Or Google. or get a cloud account of some kind where you can upload Google. things to the cloud and then download from the cloud to whatever device you have. Google Drive, 100% over Dropbox. Dropbox's way of handling files and formats and the way they change shit, and oh, it's god-awful. And what are you going to do on your Wednesdays? Um, well, I know Max is going to cry. What that's, I'm really going to do... That's what, what I'll do. I'll what I'm really going to do, if we're being completely honest, is the last, you know, three or four months have been a little rough for me, and I've gone through some patches, and... You know, I've done a lot of soul searching. And so I kind of came out the other end and I was like, okay, you know what I mean? This is one of those times where you tell yourself, oh, you know what? If I was, didn't have all these responsibilities at home and I was just by myself, I'd do all these groovy things. I'd start a band and a book club and, you know, take over the world, run for mayor or whatever. You know what I mean? And then you get there and you're doing the same dumb shit you always did. You're watching YouTube <laughs> videos and drinking beer and reading a book and playing a video game on your phone. And you're like, oh, you know what? You know what? Tomorrow, tomorrow is when I'm going to get all that going. It's just today was a bad day. I gave myself a mental health day, whatever you want to call it. And then the, the next day comes and you just keep shuffling the shit. Well, I did that a few times. And if you do that by yourself long enough, I think you go one or two directions. You either cave into it or you just snap out of it. And I sort of snapped out of it. So what am I going to do? I'm going to focus on getting my business out of my hair. I'm going to go back to Florida and meet with this attorney and decide what is happening with my divorce and the marriage and the house and all of that. And then I'm going to come back and I'm just going to put my attention on that. Now, I mean, you know, does that mean, oh, you know, Wednesday night was, you know, you know, stopping you from doing that? No, of course not. But that's what I'm going to focus on and come out the other end. And then I'll decide what I'm actually going to do. Creatively okay. speaking. Yeah. Well, more than likely what I'll do, if you, any of you care on Wednesdays, is I'll probably, I might pick up like another karaoke gig, maybe, on a Wednesday. It's not a bad um, idea. I might just spend more time working on this YouTube channel or creating another YouTube channel to uh, try and, you know, make some income, like an additional way. How do we find this YouTube channel, income. by the way? Which one? Your YouTube channel. Why don't you... Uh... Promoting science this uh because no one's watching Greg, so promoting it here doesn't make any sense. Well, three people are. <laughs> Maria might start watching it. I would check it out. <laughs> I think you I think you told me once. I'm on YouTube all the time. I would it's check sci fi it fantasy news channel. If I type sci fi fantasy news news channel, you? you have to do the whole thing. Five sci fi fantasy news channel. Okay. If you just do sci fi fantasy news, you'll get other channels because it's still pretty small. I've only got like six subscribers or whatever. So I just actually uh, uploaded another video today onto the channel, which was a, a video, a science fiction video game news piece. So I'm kind of enjoying it. It's like uh, I'm having fun with it, but it wasn't something that was getting in the way of doing this. It's just something I did no. along with this. You know? no. Yeah. It wasn't some, I mean, it made it seem like it was some side thing I was doing that was more prevalent than the podcast and it wasn't no so. no no i was joking i didn't mean no. it i didn't mean it like that i i and i understand that you know obviously the logic and i totally agree is you know if you're not doing this on wednesday night what you know whatever you're doing you know it th yeah. that's true i just felt like this had reached some sort of conclusion well i reached a conclusion because greg finally like broke down in front of us last week on the podcast and 
made it incredibly clear how we've abused and damaged him. Broke down. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I actually did a special thing on the video to point it's it a out. Moment of clarity. <laughs> Fine, same thing. You know, you have that same moment of clarity. But um, yeah, but I specifically did a nice little scrolling text thing over your head, showing that this was the moment when it all ended. So that was on the video last week. I've, I'm used to being that shtick, and I, I, I thought it was a good part of our show. You're used to being what shtick? That, that I was drunk and stupid, and you guys would jump on me. But I we mean, never considered I, you to be stupid, Greg. I, and well, I, dude, I was, I'm sitting here. I, I'm I'm the last one to throw rocks at you about drinking. No, no, I mean, but I was pretty stupid. I mean, but I thought it was funny, stupid. Well, that particular part wasn't stupid so much as very real. You, know, you were you were kind of in an emotion. You were in kind of in a heightened emotional state at that particular well, I've been time. In like the past three months, I've been in a very different state than I've ever been in my life as far as emotions. In the last three months, yeah. What's happened in the last two months? Well, three months ago, the whole gen breakup thing happened. Right, but that was three months ago. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So since then, so you're the still last, are you still months, broken up by that? I'm still yeah, I'm kind of messed up about it. Seriously, mm -hmm. wow, I I feel freedom. Um, yeah. Well, Greg, well, if it's it, I'm not I'm not trying to you know one up you here, but about no, three months I ago, I left a 30 year marriage and a. Half a million dollar house in Florida, and I live in a small room by myself most of the time. Yeah, I went three days without talking to anyone. I had to stop and go, Have I spoken? Now, I texted people and I chatted with people, I didn't speak with anybody. So, the last bit of the my my uh sponsor was actually a joke at me, which is you just need somebody to talk to to make sure you're not actually fucking going crazy. So, I get it, I get it. <clears throat> And, and and I understand it. I'm not even judging you. I'm kind of doing the same thing. It's true. And, you know. Well, I was explaining to Greg earlier before he came on that he just needed to follow your advice, which is just get over it. That is part of it. I mean, yeah. I, it, you know, that's a real dumb way of saying it. And I realize that, you know, there's a lot more to it than that. But, you know, um, it's hard. I'm not going to lie to you. But, you know, you just have to move on. Yeah, I guess I guess you could say that about the ending of this podcast. Just get over it, man. <laughs> I mean, you know, Greg, it, it, I am over it. Okay, I'm I'm totally over it. This is why yeah. we're doing this. If I had to hang on, oh, I'd find a way. I would do it, but I don't got it. You know, I made my peace when I realized that I was battling alcoholism. So when I really when I had that realization, then I was like, all right, well, this is the deal. I'm not always drunk when I'm sober. I was just like, I don't like to do this podcast anymore. Yeah. All my coworkers well. know it. They'd always be like, I'm like, I gotta go do the last fucking podcast. I wish I didn't have to, but I got it. Uh-huh. Right. Well, that's as you know, I said. Obviously, the alcoholism prevented you from actually having like a real conversation about it. You tried so many times in the past year and a half and every time, you, you know, know, that's no, my point. We though. need you. We need you. And I was like, okay, I don't think you do. <laughs> Cause I'm an idiot, but, but that's the thing though. It's like you're going. being self-deprecating, but you're not an idiot. That's what I always do. I'm not that bright though. Great. That's not, Jesus Christ. I'm that's not, not true. It's, it's not true. true. It is it's true. not true that you're stupid. It's no, not I mean, true, Greg. I know how bright I used to be. Hey, to where'd that puffery out. goddamn uh, sponsor go? We need puffery, oh, right? I, I we need him to get a puffologist so that I he realizes he's not a moron. He really, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Your 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 trained puffologist can can well. My trained puffologist is working with me to explain to me that I'm not crazy. Now, part of that is interacting with a little digital bird on my phone that I get up and dress every morning and sit on his little adventure, and then he gives me tasks to do throughout the day. So that's weird, and I understand that. But, you know, I just need somebody to go, you know what, Brendan, it's okay. And sometimes that's, you know, nobody. So that's why I think puffery is right for me. It's probably right for you. Yeah. I Maybe for different apologize. reasons. Yeah, I'm telling you. Yes. You need somebody, like, over your shoulder constantly telling you you're good enough, you're smart enough, and God darn it, people like you. Right. They don't really. It's true, Greg. They do, Greg. Oh, like come on. 
Come on. I know somebody who who really likes you and would hate to hear you like saying things like that. No, I'm not being anti-puffery. I just know that a lot of people, even like when I was younger, it was always an uphill battle to make people like me. They saw me and then instantly just take a dislike to me. I had a lot of people barely knew me and would be jerks to me. They'd be like, oh, you fat piece of shit. Well, well, and then I'd have to prove myself to them. But that's just those people. That's not everybody. I mean, everybody's going to dislike somebody based upon their appearance. That's the way it goes. The question is how you react to it, how you respond to it. I would a lot of times win them over and I'd be like, oh, I'm going to. Yeah, but then you go into agreement with them, Greg, and that's the problem here is that you're going into agreement with your detractors and that's not the way to go. I don't agree with them. I didn't like that. They didn't like you. Keep no calling reason. yourself an idiot. You say you're not smart. That's what I'm, I'm saying. Smart. I'm not. I mean, I know my limitations. I mean, I don't so think it's like, yeah, you know your limitations. That doesn't mean that, that it, it. Just the fact that you know your limitations is an example of you not being stupid. I agree. Good. I think, yeah, I think I'm pretty smart compared I, to a lot of people in America. It, Look, I mean, a lot yeah. of. I, I came from Florida. Those people do. They do not think there's anything wrong with them, and that's the problem. And I they're know. crazy and dumb. Yeah, I know. I have a certain uh, base intelligence that I, I feel like. Well, after the past five years, I'm like, well, I guess I'm not that dumb. Is that okay? I'm, I'm smart. You know, like, we're all stupid to c- compared to somebody else. Right? No, some other person. People. Apparently, a lot of people. Apparently, so I'm what? Smart. So, th- so that's the case. That doesn't make you stupid in general. All I'm trying to say is, no, what, saying, what, what, what does this have to do with you not being happy about it? What does whatever have to do with that? That's what with I'm trying what? to make. The Me being happy about life? No, no the podcast. The, the podcast. I'm not oh, happy with the podcast no, that because I think I'm stupid. Oh, okay. I mean, I always knew like I was the goofy voice of drunken idiocy, but I thought that was like you know that was kind of some people might think that's funny. You know, like oh, I'm like, I thought it was funny. That's really what yeah. it comes down to. Sometimes I thought I was funny. <laughs> you were funny. I, I I thought you were funny. Yeah. Yeah, Greg, and, you're and, just gonna have to get used to the fact that it's true. You you are funny. And as to the not as, not as funny whole, as I used to be. Well, to none whole, of us are. I can't think of things like like I might have a good joke on the tip of my brain, but I can't remember the exact name, and then it's too late. You know, I I lose the time. It's I used okay. to not do that. It, we're all old and deteriorating, Craig. I know. I know. I'm not <laughs> beating myself up that much about it, but it is kind of annoying that, like, yeah, I used to be pretty quick. I could, somebody would say something, I'd instantly know the reference. I'd be like, da da da. Yeah. And I, I used to have that too. I used to have words at my beck and call. And now yeah. I'm like, uh, what the hell is a refrigerator? <laughs> you know? <laughs> It's like what's the, uh, the refrigerator? That's what the hell I'm trying to say. No, I not, don't understand not, this totally. Not not that I'm perfect, but you know the, the truth is, if you're asking somebody who's thought about this stuff, because I have, um, y- your mind is and your memory and all that sort of shit is just like any other muscle. If you don't use it a lot, it will start to deteriorate. If you don't yeah. work out, so you just need to have mental workouts. I mean, the luck I have in my job, luck by design is that I have to solve stupid problems all the time. Like problems. I have no idea. Like jigsaw, like bananas. I doing Sudoku again. I used to love Sudoku puzzles. Do that. That I can tell you that if you do that for eight weeks to, you know, three months, something like that, you'll notice the difference. Eight weeks to three months. So that's, that's the doctor telling you, Greg. Yeah. Yeah. The puffery, puffery. Eight, eight weeks, the three weeks of Sudoku will fix your ailments. <laughs> I didn't say that. I said that if he's looking to sharpen his mind a little bit, doing some exercise, if your job, Matt, consists of doing this all day and just playing over, you know, and listening to podcasts and music, you're not really doing much. Like you're not solving it. You might have to, so I'm not saying you're not solving the problems. Like, okay, I got to do these dishes first and then I get to organize my time this way. I'm not saying that's zero problems, but it's not anything where, you know, like you've got to figure out the password from somebody's account who's dead and his ex-wife has some ideas about it. And you're literally with a pad writing down all like, like beautiful mind writing down different ideas about what it could be. Knowing like a cryptologist. Got, yeah. Knowing you've a got a breaker. Like you've got seven opportunities or it cuts you out. Yeah. Those kind of problems, but that's a different level of like, oh the past password was a Navajo. That's why I couldn't yeah, break right, the code. Exactly. 
Well, either way, um, Greg, you, you now have your prescription to handle what you perceive as your own idiocy. It's well, Sudoku you know, the thing was, for like, eight Sudoku. weeks to three months. I, I was I was a Sudoku freak for like six. Well, then months do logic that. puzzles then, or maybe uh, crossword puzzles. I was like, sure, this, but... you do those too. <laughs> crossword puzzles. That's that's your now your prescription to uh, mental health, Greg. All I'm you saying is, this goes back to the you know get busy and do something else. You know what I mean? If you're not happy, then you got you got to change something. You got to do. I'm something. trying to do and, that, and that doesn't mean more booze. I know that I've been lessening my booze a lot. Yeah. But I do uh, want to start this YouTube channel. I do want something to like. So what are you going to do about it, Greg? What are you? What? How are you going to make this happen? I don't know. Like call call up more friends and be like, how do I get this video off my phone? Are you familiar with the Maybe. organization Free Geek? Yes. Yeah, they're based in Portland. Go to them and they say, I'm just yeah, what the hell? You know, it's they're a nonprofit. And yeah. they might even have stuff they could give you to help you on your way, you know, but maybe they give you advice on like how to actually make or there might be, uh, there might be workshops at the, like the local library you could go to where they teach you how to do YouTube channels for I've got old men work. who look like stevedores, you know, <laughs> I don't know if I want to hang out with those, that ilk, <laughs> that, ilk, that <laughs> so, type of person. You, you are the resident longshoreman in this podcast, Greg, so. Brendan's more looking like a lumberjack, but you're more the longshoreman. Oh, good. That's yeah, what I yeah. was going for was more lumberjack. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a lumberjack and I'm okay. Yes. So many things I could add to this in post-production, but that ain't happening tonight. Um, as a completely side note, Greg, I don't know if you know this, but Baby Ketten's 17th anniversary is tonight. And I was invited to the party to come early. If you're interested, I'm planning on being there around 7.30, 8 o'clock. Yeah. You should go. I'm sure he would invite you if he thought that you actually ever looked at your Facebook page. No, he didn't. He's not like... You were a big sponsor of him. So he, you're... I was you're a like, big sponsor of him? You're like Warren Buffett for him. No, I just gave him some money for a room. Yeah. For, like to help him with his... Kickstarter. Kick, his Kickstarter campaign. Yeah, that's all. So you, were, you helped him start. A little bit. I mean, more people helped with a lot more money than I did. I brought a lot of people in. That's where I think I came in more handy because I brought I brought humans into his place of establishment so they could be, get benefit from it, you know. But anyway, so yeah, so that's my plan for tonight. But I won't be doing any really editing of this. Other I think than Brendan that. should come. Brendan could sing Minor Threat. He actually has Minor Threat songs and Fugazi songs. That's good. Yeah, it'll actually be a big party. Is there going to be free vegan food? I don't know. Probably not free. I don't think John believes in free at his restaurant, at his uh, establishment. What is I'm just happy. It's a baby ketten karaoke. It's a karaoke place, and they have uh, Where is very it? obscure karaoke tracks. It's about a five minute walk or a 20 minute walk from my house. Oh, it's like okay. towards the river that. from my house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so he's starting karaoke an hour early tonight in celebration of 17 years as a thing. Baby as an establishment? DJ. Nice. No, the establishment's only been around since just before the pandemic, about a year before the pandemic. But he was a KJ that people would follow for like 17 years. Like he would just pop up in different bars. Yeah. He catered to he, the hipsters. He was one of the first guys who wrote his own tracks, made his own tracks. For karaoke. Well, he wasn't one of the first guys to do that, but well, he was the one who one really of the popular... First. No, he was one of the ones who popularized it in this area for doing really obscure things that nobody else was doing and doing them in high quantity. And he that's what made it. New York and he also would like take songs out that he didn't want to hear people sing anymore. So they would no longer sing those songs like Picture from Kid Rock or Don't Stop Believing or stuff from the Grease soundtrack. And he would just get rid of those so that he would get a certain clientele as opposed to the great unwashed. But I would beg to differ, even though I don't have statistics. In his first three years, he was written up in the New York Times as like this KJ who was doing something nobody was doing. I read the article. It wasn't that he was but doing something read... nobody else was doing. What He he was just doing no. things differently. No, the fact that he made his own I track. read the article too, Greg. I, I remember know. Remember well. they talked oh. about how he went down his basement and recorded the bass line of a track he couldn't find a sample of for a new yeah. order. But he wasn't the first one to do that. I mean, the people were doing I that know, for years there was before. One guy, but not many. I'm saying no, there wasn't one guy. People were doing it for years before. For I years, always been there. Years before, 
Okay. Yeah, this isn't karaoke chat. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, I, I think you guys would kill it if you stopped doing this nonsense, sent me packing, and just did a karaoke show. <laughs> no, no, no. Because no. Or have you stay on and no, just like, give a shit about it. No, because then I just shut up about karaoke. Yeah, that why am I here? That's the whole point. You know what I mean? You'd be the curmudgeon. Yeah. No one, I mean, the idea of having like the the we've got, you know, Joe Blow on the right and and Steve Smith on the left, and they're gonna battle it out for you. No one cares. No one wants it. They want it in they want puffery. They just want to just hear whatever that is what I like. That's all they want. It's kind of sad and disappointed. I thought people would because I like that. Like I like happy hour news because they're like just so random. Like you don't know what they're gonna fucking say next. Right. I'm and just I'm saying still, I'm just saying the point counterpoint thing has no, I mean, but they sense. do that too. Sometimes they argue and they're you know drunk, so they're just kind of like I mean shanty not... shanty bullies the other guy. Uh, oh yeah, oh yes, strongly yeah. strongly Sanchez. Yes. Sanchez, yes. thank you. Yeah, uh, if you're listening, Sanchez, I do remember I just brainworm so but yeah so and i love them both but you know i don't know maybe maybe they're maybe that show maybe that's what happened maybe maybe sanchez was like you know what tired of this no what they're still they going done? they just they going. just released a new episode i think last week or something yeah. i decided to listen i made myself listen to it so that i could be supportive oh good so did you like and subscribe uh, i don't know if i think I you subscribed didn't. to them no, I think I subscribed to them. I, I just don't remember who I subscribed. I have like a number of different uh, Google Chrome pages that I watch different things on. So oh, I it's don't, like I, I have don't. to have a different email address for different Google Chrome um, moments, I guess. I never like you know. or subscribe. I, I'm a podcast listener every day. I listen to like 10 podcasts religiously. I never think to do that. All right. So what are the 10 podcasts you listen to religiously, Greg? The Dollop. Yeah. The History Podcast. I listen to... The History Podcast is the name of the podcast? No, it is a History Podcast, but it's called uh, the you don't, have to, you don't give me specifics. Just tell me the names okay. of them. Yeah. A lot of them, I barely remember the names. It's like comic podcasts. Um, Word Balloons, which is terrible, but he has good guests on. Just name <laughs> them off. Just list okay. them off right now. Don't give it any uh, detail. Just list them. So the dollop, the Word Balloons... I just know them by the logo. I just click on I. The actual names escape me sometimes. Um, Gilbert Gottfried's podcast, Until He okay. Died, I kind of stopped. Say, right. Keep going. Going. Again, just list them off, Greg. Come on. I'm thinking. It's That's hard. Three. How do we think of the names? Uh, I just click on the... Do Sudoku I, right now. That will help you. I, don't know. Okay, I, I, I honestly, Matt, don't know what the hell you think you're trying to achieve or if you're just yeah. being an asshole. Because no, right now you're just kind of being an asshole. I know. It's even more than 10. It's like literally... I. Pop around all I just wanted to know what the names of the freaking podcasts are. You're the I asshole, you Brandon. Okay, Fuck well, you, here, here, Fuck here, you here. and your asshole labeling. Here, here, let me give you some names of some podcasts because it's really about you just sort of want a list of podcasts so you can. I wanted to hear which about. ones he was. He said he listened for, to 10 of them, and I wanted to hear what the 10 oh, were. No, that no, he wanted I, to, I, wanted I, to challenge him because I wasn't said, trying to challenge him, regardless of your own weird concept. I wanted to know what 10 podcasts he was listening to. Why is that a bad thing to want to know, Brendan? Why do you have a problem with that? Seriously, what is your fucking problem? Because you're being an asshole. No, I'm not. You're being there a fucking. I was there trying to find out what the names of the podcast were. Come on, man. That was no, not come on doing. yourself for fuck's sake. Mm-hmm. Do we have to argue on the last podcast? Guys? Apparently, yes, we do. Well, if, if 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 we're having a podcast about how this podcast made Greg feel bad, and then you proceed to be kind of an over the top, uh, you like, haven't pretend to be empathetic for once. Go ahead. You, you're so clever, Matt. That's yes, aren't I? Aren't I just trivia. so clever? You are very are you clever. Yes, incredibly Matt. clever. Like, 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 Greg is just trying to tell a story about this guy that you guys are going to go see or not. And all you could do is correct him every time he said something about the New York Times article. Well, no, people have been doing that more and more. Well, that he wasn't the first one to do that. Just let him talk. Why do you feel it's so compelled to interrupt people with your own stuff? That's my question. I don't know. I'll have to dissect it and like look at it closely and go, what? What actually makes me do that? I'm just curious. Maybe you have a better insight for me, Brendan. Why don't you tell me? Well, you've got a full analysis of what I'm doing, so give it up. 
No, I'm just saying this is what. No, come on. Watches. I mean, this is what anyone, you want to get into. So get no, into it. No, you well, have you have the incisiveness at your command. So you know the analysis of my behavior and my personality. So you should tell me exactly what it is. If it's if it's truly a quandary for you, a thing that's like making you go, God, really, what is causing him to do this? I, I think you already have the answer, and we may as well just say it so that I can does. so I can learn from it, Brendan. I don't have the answer why you do what you do, man. I don't know I why. Don't either. No, no, I wasn't talking about it's you. Confusing. I was talking about Brendan. Yeah. I know, but I think both no. of us are like, why does Matt do that sometimes? Right. It's like yeah. you wonder why I do, why does Greg drink all the time and be stupid? I, I don't think that you be stupid, Greg. Well, I'm stupider when I drink. Like obviously, yeah, I forget things you say. And these are these I'm are not, not the, these are not the same points. Yeah, but can no. I just say, I, no, but, can I but no, something? I wanted to get Brendan's response. Okay, Greg. I don't I don't have one. Yeah. Well, you must. I mean, come yeah. on, you like went I, at I, me, I, so come at me, come at me, I good. Did. I did. Nah, I, nah, it's not good enough, Brendan. Come on, let's do better. Do better at what? Do better at coming after me. I mean, you, you have this analysis. You. You're saying I'm so clever Roger. and whatever else well, you wanted to Roger. like insult Roger. me with. All so I'm come on, is, keep going. Uh, Matt, chill out for a second. Just chill out for a second. All I said was that right then when Greg was talking, you were being kind of an asshole. If you can't accept that without this kind of attack on me, then that's actually part of the problem is that you can't recognize when you're just being a dick. I am perfectly willing to understand if I was being a dick to Greg or to you that, and it was uncalled for or just out of the blue, I could accept that. It doesn't sound like you can there. Okay. Well, I guess it doesn't sound like I can. It sounds like you guys are gaslighting each other. Probably. <laughs> can I just say, guys, really, it's, I don't want, the podcast, my decision to not want to do it is really not about feeling, you guys making me feel bad. It's, it's just, I, it's just not that fun. There's many episodes where nobody insults me. It's just right. Like as we have those podcasts with the shitty guests. Even when we don't have the shitty guests, it's better. But I don't know. It's just ran out of steam. Here, I have a question for you, Greg. Yeah. Like the last few podcasts that we did, not the last last one, but like the, say the two or three or four beyond yeah. before that. Now at the end of it. I felt pretty good about it. I, I'm being honest. I think Matt did as well. Like, oh, you know what? That kind of came together better than ones have in the past. I, I did feel like things were actually improving. This is my this is my quandary. So, but despite that, and you said at the end of them, and Matt is my witness. You said, you know what? That was the best podcast ever. Yeah. So either that was complete horseshit, or no, it was a good podcast. It was fun. Okay. Right. But I. Probably would have rather just read comics or did karaoke in my kitchen or something. Okay. <laughs> okay, but you see what I'm saying? It's like, you're yeah. Saying, yeah, it's gotten really bad and it's not fun anymore. But I feel like, I mean, I can tell you, I don't think Matt and I have had any kind of like argument like that in at least a year. Yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while, right? There's you no know? argument here. This is all perfectly pleasant. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So but no, anyway, what my point is, I my point is, I was like, whoa, this is weird. This it feels like it's getting better. It seems like it. You were saying it was better, and then to hear it was one hundred percent the opposite of what I thought. I think you're trying to gaslight Matt and I. <laughs> no, I admit, like when I say best episode <laughs> ever, which and Matt is even pointed out, it's like you always say that, or you say it a lot. And there's certain, certain episodes where we we tell better jokes, we're like more like bantering in a funnier way. I agree. Sometimes we don't have the good material, and we're just kind of like, sure. uh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's what you said. Okay, but sometimes we're pretty funny, and so I mean that's better. Yeah, I thought one of the things that we it's, have improved on over the last year or so is that when I remember when we first started, the biggest problem was we kept talking over each other, and we yeah didn't kind of we weren't we didn't have like the rhythm in place. That's gotten much better. As, a, as just one thing. I don't think that Greg has the attention, and pardon me, and correct me if I'm wrong, Greg, in terms of um, making the show better wasn't really something he was interested in. I was. I wanted to be funnier. And I was always trying to be as funny as I could. Right, but you're saying you wanted you wanted to be funnier. I want all of us to be funnier. Yeah. Okay, so if that's the that's, case, though, but popular. but but were you willing to try and make us funnier? Well, yeah. Sometimes, like, oh, oh, I think Matt's gonna say something funny. Brent's gonna, I'm gonna back off. 
you know what I mean? I was trying to think of that, but also I'm not. No, I meant in terms of like, like not during the podcast, like, uh, you know, outside of the podcast, like have a discussion about what we could do to be funnier, to, to make it something you'd be more interested in. It's not something you could talk about. Funny is just like, I don't know. It's like, well, I mean, part of funny is preparation. I guess, but some people are just funny on podcasts. They're just, they're just funny. It's not like, they're quick. I can, tell, I can tell you, honestly, Greg, no trying to come after you here. I can tell you honestly that I didn't put as much effort into it because I didn't feel like you wanted to. And I didn't feel like trying to force you to do something. And I thought the three of us were just having fun anyway, so that was fine. But I would have driven us harder had I thought that you primarily would have come along. I felt like Matt would have within reason because like I mean, even when I moved up here remember we were talking about oh how could we set up like a, a studio or something where we're not doing it over zoom and we could get a you know we talked about that and I remember Greg you were you were really opposed no to I did not want to do that because that would right. make it even harder more of a right. chore right I should like take a bus somewhere and... I think Matt said he'd pick you up but you know okay. whatever I'm it's not trying to gaslight been, like, you but no no I know I know you're right I, I, it's not like I'm denying it. I did not want to do that because then it would be even more of a chore. Like, oh, I have to leave my house. I just got home. Right. Oh, yeah. He was absolutely adamant. But by the way, yeah. Happy Hour News Team has responded on YouTube. Aww. They said, and thanks, Matt, for forcing yourself to listen to our show. <laughs> so yeah. we listen because we're genuinely interested in what you guys have to say. Well, thank you, guys. We appreciate you. And uh, I didn't mean it in terms of like forcing myself to listen to you. It's just that I realized I hadn't in a while. So I wanted to make sure that I did listen to you guys. So I don't want you to take that the wrong way. But but anyway, so you know, I remember when we had the conversation about um, doing us all in the same place. And Greg was absolutely refusing. Yeah. That was really where I really got the idea. I'm like, yeah, I... this, this isn't going to go any further. I knew right at that moment. <laughs> I don't think that Zoom we were. I knew back. we were doomed from that moment on. I don't think this Zoom thing is holding us back. I, I yeah. listen to podcasts. I can hear everyone talk. It's not like oh god, this quality. Is well, just no. The fact shitty. is, that our sound quality is kind of shitty. Yeah, I and the video to quality is not the best. I mean, it gets no. better, but it's it. It could be so much better if it was better lit and more yeah, in different it, locations. And if you maybe. If you, I don't know. Well, no, the fact is that your sound is different than my sound and different than Greg's and it different is. than Brendan's sound. Right. And it's and it's not good because there's like different especially since podcasting is really an audio platform. Right. You know, you really kind of have to really dial in the audio to get people to keep listening. And I've read so many different things on Reddit and Facebook where people talk about podcasts and like the thing that turns them off the most is the difference in sound quality of different hosts for that matter. You know, yeah. different podcasts. I mean, what, what people the, just turn off immediately because they don't like the sound. Right. And 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 you will listen to a podcast you're not even that super interested in just because it is so well engineered. Like I listened to this podcast called Here Be Monsters or something, I think. And it was a piece of art in terms of the sound. There wasn't any YouTube channel. It was just all audio. And he had layers of sounds and he was walking and you could hear his footsteps and dripping. It was almost ASMR kind of like in podcasts as Matt is saying they're a they're an audio thing and if you're not famous so people are like oh that's a famous comedian i've heard of you're just a bunch of three knuckleheads then you know you gotta do something to be i'm just saying with my bad hearing i listen to the podcast almost every one and i've never been like i can't can't hear okay so think about the first four words you just used in that sentence um, I am curious, Arranj. No, with my bad hearing. That's what I'm saying. With my bad hearing, I could still hear everyone clearly. Well, no one, no right. one is, no one no, is but what I'm they saying they is because you're bad hearing, you're missing like the nuance of the sound overall quality that's different between each of us. In other words, you don't hear the graininess in your sound. You're not hearing the muffled now sounds that come from Brendan, right? Right. As long as um, I can hear the what they're saying, I don't right? Care. But that's your standard. I guess yeah, different people have to, and, I, and I'm saying this is based upon yeah. all of the reading that I've done in terms of people who like listen to podcasts. Yeah. What they appreciate more, they want like pristine sound. Like they want, they don't want to hear Zoom sound. 
Yeah, they I want mean, Donald yeah. Fagan. Not yeah, because if the dollop said it like they were on Zoom, you probably wouldn't be as interested in them. No, I would. They're pretty funny. Maybe. I mean, but it, if you found others that sound... As long as I can hear their voices. As long as it wasn't quiet. Okay. Sometimes okay. they're quiet. So, so, so yeah. with the dollop being an outlier, more often than not, if you're listening to a podcast without any sort of visual on it, and it isn't dialed into some specific like interest you have, like growing walnuts or something and so it's like the only growing walnuts podcast there is and so you'll listen to it no matter how bad it is but we're doing old white guys doing kind of half-baked commentary and stand-up jokes there's a lot of competition in that category and we're I've not taking never seen not, well, i've never i listen to a lot of podcasts I, that's why i thought you've we never were you've never li- you've never watched the joe rogan show you've never watched uh Tom no, Segura's, but, Bill Burr. Uh, but they're almost like kind of professional. Like they like. I understand. I mean? They don't just like ramble like people, real people do. So I thought yeah, they, they, no, no, them. no. I mean, Joe Rogan has interviews, but when he's there with like a couple of his lunkhead LA comic friends, it sounds a lot like this. It's just. But, it's funny. Just, <laughs> but yeah, it can be not always, you know yeah. what I mean? But I'm just saying that we're in a, we're in a, We've not differentiated ourselves in a niche that has a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. The, what made us a little bit different is the fact that, for one thing, we have waspy soda pop. That makes us a little bit different. I mean, you but know, that didn't not that it's a not, that's not that it's a good thing, but it's a different thing. It you is know? different. We have, you know, the the legal questions for you. That was different. Not necessarily a good thing, but it's a different thing. And the fact it, is, is that if we had prepared these segments and given them more time and more attention Mm -hmm. and made them more professional, we would have gotten more viewers probably, you know, if we had promoted it properly, if we'd taken those things, put them out into YouTube shorts or Facebook reels or Instagram reels and done all of those different things, we would have brought in more people. You know, if I had taken more time and put those onto TikTok, we would have gotten more people there too, you know, but that just didn't get done because it never seemed like you were really interested in this being successful. I wanted to be successful. I just no, but you didn't show. It. You didn't show that you were interested in it being successful. It was more you, you were like, eh, I'm not really happy. Well, yeah, it's just something to do to pass time. It's fun, right? Exactly. That's my point. Yeah. I'm saying is that you weren't looking at it that way. Sorry. I was hoping for it to be something like that, and then maybe it would take off. It was just that, you know, it. Yeah. it I was a little deflated once I re- had that realization, you know? So I'm like, oh, I'll just have some fun with it, you know? So I started doing stuff to the sponsors for visually, you know? There's not much you can really do auditorially in the same way, you know, for I the think podcast that platforms. Helped. That probably helped a lot with the YouTube channel. Well, you know, there, there's it's mistakes I made good. with the YouTube channel, which I think prevented us from really taking off better. I messed with the YouTube algorithm, and I think that screwed us. A couple of different ways, but again, that's just something that. And you showed my face. I did. No, no, there's a people lot. Of, like, there's a lot of this guy. There's a lot of ugly people on the internet, Greg. So <laughs> there's no, a that's... lot of ugly people. In but there. none as ugly as me. But no, but I'm just saying that it wasn't at your face, or you know. But there was, uh, yeah. So you know, I was going through everything I was going through, and um, I didn't have the time. And then when I was coming out, that's what I was saying. I was like, okay, well, now I have the time. And it was kind of like, eh, you know what? Let's just keep doing what, I was, what we're doing. And I'm like, which mostly came from you, Greg. And, and that's okay. Because it's okay that you're like, you know what? This is a chore. I'd rather read comic books. That's a, that's a very honest answer, and I'll accept it. Yes. It shall be accepted. And by the way, Brandon, I just want to fucking say I fucking apologize for, like, yelling at you. It's okay. You fucking man. apologize. <laughs> It's okay. Because I don't know. I don't know that I was deliberately being a dick or an asshole to Greg, but if it comes across that way, well, you know, that's if you it's just started, quibbly. that's I part of my being, use. You're being quibbly, I would say. It's part yeah, of my but, usefulness. Yeah, it was just it was just getting to be more than I could I could take. Given Thank the you con- for your belly there, Greg. Given the con you know, the content of the show and what we're talking about. I just thought it was, you know, for one more one more around the bend with you and me and defending Greg and him being sad and you bullying him. I thought it, it seemed like the thing to do. I think Greg is in the bathroom right now. Cause he got up, we got to see the stains on his sweatshirt. 
then he turned it off, and now he's like positioning it in the bathroom. So I think he's listening to us right now. He didn't do waspy soda pop, so I don't no time to pee. Yeah, well, there's no waspy soda pop. You see, I had a whole plan. I had a whole plan for like ending things off by December, you know. Yeah. But uh, so instead, it's just all going to be very abrupt, and uh, you know. It would have just been for mainly for my entertainment anyway. So that's why it's that's why it's easy for this to end, you know, because I realized that most of it was just for my entertainment and not necessarily for the greater good of the universe. So well, uh, the greater good of the universe is a big is a big reach. But, you know, I, I just think that. Sometimes things just, you know, <laughs> they just don't work out. It's been sort of the story <laughs> of 2022. <laughs> no matter how hard you try, no matter how many steps you take, um, how many grids you make, how many different ways of calculating the the points of love expressed and not expressed, and no matter how much you give to that, sometimes it just doesn't work. That's true. And I just realized that this makes me sadder because this will be your second divorce in one year. It, yeah, it's true. I've, I've, I, I, it's been, like I said, it's been a rough 30 days for me, you know, but I was kind of <laughs> like, well, maybe this is, this is, you know, whatever, this is what it's meant to be, you know? Well, it is, you know, from, from the ashes, perhaps if Phoenix, will, Greg, did you pee on your chest? There's like yes. a big wet spot in the middle That's of your so chest, which wasn't there when you went to the bathroom. No, it's, <laughs> so um. It's pudding. So have you done to yourself? Pay, do I have to pay Brendan alimony? I think you might divorced? have to. You're going to have to pay him like some kind of special Gregimony. Um, Greg from what I can tell. Okay, so no. Yeah. From what See I can ya. tell. No. Bye. Don't, don't mind us, Greg. Just walk away. <laughs> what just happened? I don't know. I thought he was having a All conversation. Right. I'm right here. I was listening. I could hear you. Okay. <laughs> So anyway, uh, no, I don't think you owe me alimony. If this is an if this is an ask Bren, Brendan ask Brendan uh, question, no, you don't owe me alimony. We you weren't together. Alimony. You make way more money than I do. I know, but we weren't together long enough. We never signed any documents. I mean, I stayed at your place for a week and a half. It's common but, law. But then you kick your girl, your crazy yeah, girlfriend, kicked kick me out. <laughs> I know. So so literally, I was the one thrown out. So I think that you know. I shouldn't owe you anything. You kicked me out. Well, you were bringing <laughs> disease into my home. Disease. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You were like a mongrel. You were like a flea bitten mongrel in my house. He was like an old, an old house cat that you drug in. Yes. Typhoid Brendan. Brendan, yes. Typhoid Larry. <laughs> uh, so sad. But I think before we go, though, um, we should at least get this out of the way. Should be really? Should, I think. I think. We, well, I mean, not that it's gonna. He has least, an opinion. He may time. not always be right. He's a real fake lawyer. He's old and he's white. Ask him a question, cause he's a good egg for bogus advice. Ask Greg. Ask Greg. Ask Greg. That's the last time I'll ever hear that song. Well, you know, I may have it queued up for the future if you ever want to hear it in general. So I know. Can, it's my favorite part it. of the podcast. <laughs> Lavana Bracci, everyone. So, so yes. Um, so, Greg, well, I have a legal question for you. What is your liability to all of the podcast listeners over the years that we've been doing this? Um, what's the amount of restitution you should be paying them for causing this to all end? The eight people that have listened to us. I think it's 12. I think they owe me restitution for all the entertainment I've given them for free. Is, is, does that sound egotistical? So they owe you? Yes. <laughs> like reparations? Yes. Repar like I have given. So, you, my... so they abused you and so you deserve money from them. Not for that they abuse. abused me, but they okay. have definitely without any. Uh, they took advantage Monetary, of you. Monetary, without any uh, remuneration, they have fed off of my uh, my wit and my candor and my um, insight. Greg, the fatted calf is what you're saying. <laughs> yes, I don't think they have. I, I they should they owe me a little money. 
Okay. More than a and, pizza, too. Oh, I was going to say, so like one, one more pizza? Well, that would be nice. That would be a start. But really, with how much laughs and um, thoughtful comments I've given them over the past two and a half years, uh, I've, I, you know, I've, I've been there for them through COVID, through um, the end of a uh, Many TV shows on Netflix. I'm Mike Patton. I'm George C. Scott Patton. Greg Pettix, 2024. Come and get me, Trump. <laughs> I'm announcing my candidacy. You owe me. You, America owes me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's time to give me your votes because you, I've given them you myself. owe me. Even though apparently I could have given a lot more, but I gave some part of myself. <laughs> with a, you, with a fucking you gave pizza. your liver is what you gave. No, I would have done that anyway. My liver was already <laughs> gone. But at least this way, it was like something you were presenting for the world to see and to experience was your liver. Yeah, but that was uh, a draw of the show. People were like, nobody's ever been this drunk doing a podcast. I like how you always say this is the draw of the show with no evidence to say that this was the draw of the show. I just figure people like to see <laughs> the freaks. They like seeing freaks. And what podcast has a guy who's so drunk he can't even pronounce words? That must have been some novelty to some people. I don't drunk, know. Drunk history? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Just See, look starter. how popular that was. See? Was that a See? podcast? Thank you. I was was a TV, it was like a web show, and then it turned into a TV show, right? Yeah, it was a, it was a web show. It was a yeah. YouTube thing, and then it went. But but it it could have worked as a podcast. But again, it was also really well produced, and then they got celebrities <laughs> in. Yeah. But the people, I, I loved it because it was good. But the, they were way drunker than you've ever been on any episode. <laughs> but they were really <laughs> smart people. Though. Although really last know. week Greg was pretty drunk. That was about as close as he'd come to some of these people. Like I've seen episodes where they're like literally falling out of. Yeah. The- oh yeah, where they puked on the show. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, those people are real. There was a puke. On yeah, show? I think so. Yeah. I think so. Oh my god. Or they is that fell over. Going? Or is that? Long I don't know. Ago? I think it ended a couple of years ago. I, think that I used to great. watch it pretty religiously, but uh, I haven't seen yeah. it in a while. I haven't heard it's, about it. It was a great show. Well, I, like I think there's episodes re- on Hulu. They had really Ooh. renowned historians who, even though they were that drunk, they were still giving you some information. Like, even though they were... I don't know that they had renowned historians. I think they no. had people who read the history on Wikipedia no. and recounted no, it. No, it was always like professors. <laughs> no, 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 no. They, were, they were legit professors. I mean, yeah. renowned. We can Writers. They were, they I don't were remember definitely... professors being on that show. They oh, yeah. They always were. They were like, they were something. Stories. They weren't just no, like, they were like actors and, and the Hollywood types generally. No, no. The person narrating it was not that person. They would then, the video would be like Jack Black yeah. walking, and Jack Black is talking, but the person narrating. No, I'm talking about the people narrating because I remember looking the people up who were narrating because I was wondering who they were. I think so, you should be. I, I don't remember go... professors, is all I'm saying. I no, think I think that was back. the whole shtick, Matt. They would get these real historians to do this. And yeah. get them these weren't just least, some bimbo in you Hollywood. You guys have that, a yeah. different memory of that show than I do. I think I'm being gaslighted right now. You probably are, but you should check it out <laughs> on YouTube and prove Gaslight in your face, Matt. Because <laughs> that's how I remember it. I don't remember perfect. I mean, maybe that was that in the very early days, but I don't think that that continued. I mean, let's not hung up on the word professor, but they certainly yeah. weren't comedians and actresses or something. They were they well. Were there, some were TV writers. I remember nope. that, you know, nope. and uh, some were like comic writers. Um, I remember. There... I remember one very distinctly because she was kind of a cute girl, and she was yeah. probably in her thirties, and she was definitely a professor of something somewhere. <laughs> professor of. Uh... Media arts professor of drunk history college. (laughs) All right. Anyway. Anyway. All right. Well, um, uh, what else do we want to do? How do we want to wrap up this final show? Because we're already like an hour and a half in. Uh, I I don't want to do a last word. That's what I'm sure I don't. I think Greg. You don't have to do a last word, but we should at least play the thing one final time. I think just for the sake of playing it. Because many ridiculous. times, many. This is what I'd like to do. I would because like you would to, get argued with, and it was never the last word. I know. So that's what I'm saying. I would like to. I forget the, the exact Robert rules. I would like to give my time to the gentleman from Southeast, and he can have the last word. 
I don't want the last word. No, too bad. You got it. This is the last word with Brendan Haggerty. I just thought we should play it. We don't have to do it. We just, you know, there, have it gone well, one final it. time. Could what? you maybe, since it's the last episode, could you explain why you did it backwards in nonsense words? There is no real purpose behind it other than to just have something unusual. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, you know, I didn't, I didn't, I, although I made the joke because it does sound like no talent simp a little bit. <laughs> I knew that Matt was not smart enough to know that if he played what he said one way backwards, it would sort of give you that impression. I mean, that's like evil genius level. Yeah, right? like Black think, Sabbath, Satan is a right, master, whatever. Right. Or Kiss. I mean, Matt's you know smart, but that's evil genius. That's a different, that's a different. Yeah, thing. no, I just reversed it for the sake of um, having it sound different, you know, be <laughs> something slightly amusing. You know, it's all about slight amusement. This particular podcast is like, yes. what could somebody get? Not, not a chortle, not a guffaw, but a titter. You know, I would go for the titters mainly for this podcast maybe more than that's anything the, else. Maybe that's your new podcast, Matt. You know, a titter, <laughs> titters. Quibble It'll squabble. be bought out by Elon Musk. <laughs> Quibble squabble and titter. Like we should call it that. <laughs> titters, titters, no titters and teehees. <laughs> the podcast that's just slightly amusing. <laughs> right. Well, I would guarantee two laughs per episode is what I would do in the early days of doing this. So it's like people would get two laughs or they get their money back, you know, they don't get the two laughs. We usually got the one laugh off the name of the podcast and then the other laugh hopefully would come along with something Greg would say. And then they get their, uh, they get their pizza back. <laughs> Send them a no pizza. one, no one ever gave us a pizza, Greg. But slowly we earned it from them for pennies. And we, we, we earned, we got 50 bucks from anchor. And the pizza cost more than 50 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> so. so you know, like it, boss. It was a, it Let's was a, just say, Greg, that uh, you never had to spend any money on the podcast. You should have just went domino. She could have gotten double the amount of pizzas for 50 bucks. I, I was always willing to invest in things throughout the course of this. I mean, yeah. you know, we have a we have a website, Greg. I don't know if you know that. But it didn't just I, pop up for free anywhere, you know. So that's covered, and that costs you know, money to make a website to uh, to host one. Yeah, you know. No, I didn't know that. I, I sure yeah. hope so. Well, yeah, I'm in no. the wrong business. So so anyway, so I'll keep the website going for until the domain is up for uh, re-registering, and then I'll just shut it down. I'll shut down the website then, and uh, I'm going to shut down the Patreon page. And, uh, you know, the oh, YouTube no. channel can go forever. I know exactly. We had a the, Patreon page? We've always had a Patreon page, I thought for years. We just never like... added anything to it because oh, I you were never years, willing but... to put stuff no, on the I, Patreon, Greg. I said Greg. we should have put the videos of our I kept asking our... you to learn what about Patreon it? so you could, like, be over that, but you never oh, were no, willing but I didn't to do know it. Pa- I don't know how to do Patreon. I don't know how to. That was my point, was so that you could learn to do but it. But we were on Patreon. I thought you said for why you. Didn't know how to get on it, or no? I well, knew I, no. I, we had a membership from the beginning. I just didn't know what to do with it, you know? oh. it and I does, didn't take the time. Does Greg know about the OnlyFans thing that I was doing for the podcast? <laughs> Did we talk about that? I have Dude. a lot of still photos of his feet, Greg. Oh. I was actually one of the guys tipping you, Brendan, all that whole time. Oh, okay. I, I, <laughs> I was I was butt plug sixty nine. That was me. Oh, that was you. Yeah, I thought there was a certain familiarity <laughs> there that I wasn't quite familiar with. Yeah, makes sense. Like, who actually was it? So there's that. Um, what else am I going to be doing to just to end end things off? Um, so yeah, Patreon. I'll just shut that down because that's been kind of pointless. I'll shut the U Hive channel down because um, no. that's definitely pointless. Right wing site or something? No, that was a uh, a crypto oh. social media place yeah, yeah. that nobody could figure out what to do with. You know, but which I put money into the thing, and I'm hoping one day maybe it'll be popular, and I'll get that money back. We shall see. I Don't think a lot of people, happen. a lot of people thought of that about the metaverse too. So we'll see how that works out. <laughs> well, you know, they're they're putting ads out, trying to get people involved. Um, what else? Uh, yeah, so the website will be shut down probably within about six months or so. Um, the YouTube channel will just you know go into receivership, I suppose. Um, that'll it'll never be there die. forever. 
Yeah, it'll be there forever for people to to they want to do it. Dead. I think what I'll probably do is occasionally I'll take old episodes and things and make them into like special videos here and there and just upload them to the channel every once in a while just for shits and giggles, you know. Um sure. so that's kind of a uh down the road type plan. Sad. What's that? That makes me sad. What makes you sad? Just putting out videos, cannibalized videos. No, I mean, it's like anybody else has done with old shows and things of the past. They just, I like, guess. I still want to do the super cut of you doing this with your mouth. That thing. I want like a 10 minute video of you doing We that. should have done that for Patreon. We would have <laughs> a lot of money. Yes. This is our OnlyFans. I, I always like loved your Patreon, Patreon suggestions, but anyway. <laughs> People would only fans. I never created an only fans channel would though. Be into that, be like, oh, that's hot. No, like, they, it was mostly the only fans was mostly feet, and 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 the ins and the inner part of your knee for some reason, <laughs> like the, really? the not the front that's part, the but fans? the back part, like with yeah, the yeah. tendons. Yeah, I don't know why that was a thing, but that's kind of hot actually. It, it was. It was a. It was a. It was a. It was a niche. Niche. Whatever you want to say. And wasn't yeah, that like, um, Paris Hilton's catchphrase, Greg? The one you just used. Niche. No, that is kind of hot. It's not just a common. Paris. <laughs> Paris Greg Hilton. I don't know. I thought it was like her catchphrase, but anyway. I didn't know that. I didn't know you were related to her. I, I were dating know she her. Had it. I didn't know she had a cat phrase other than it was something that what? came from like the team, the reality like, show she was on. So her catchphrase was I'm a dumb cunt. Isn't that her catchphrase? That should have been that should have been it. Isn't that what she always really. say? You know, this could be the opportunity to get everything off our chest <laughs> since it's the final episode that see if YouTube will actually ban us or not for the last episode. Should I talk about the Zionist conspiracy? <laughs> Let's talk. Can you know, the, just Kanye we're going to go into that. <laughs> if we're going to talk about that. We should talk about how Trump just recently got like the highest honor possible from the Zionists or of America. What? After yeah, you said he, that he, stuff? Are you kidding? He just got some big award. So the Zionists are saying, keep talking shit about us. They're, no, Zionists like, are like totally, way to go that's Trump. That's what I'm saying. Didn't he just no, say They're something? not talking about Kanye. They're talking about Trump. I know, but I thought Trump said an anti-Semitic thing in the past few weeks. There was a controversy. No, no, he said Kanye something West about the did. Jews. No, no, I know no. he did too. That was I Kanye. Trump no, Trump would have said something positive because he needs that fan base. Yeah, so. and he's always been big on you know protection of the Israel state and yeah. through everybody else. I mean, yeah. that's your that's your standard Republican. Yeah, exactly. Take, yeah, it's so. to keep the event the evangelicals in line because they're very pro-Israel. Right, because you know the end of the world needs to happen, and it's got to happen there. So we got to stoke that fire. So Jesus, I know. But the weird thing is, is like in the revelations, eventually everyone turns against Israel. So they're gonna, whoever, whatever Republicans gonna say, now's the time. All of a sudden, we're gonna hate Israel because that's what Revelations tells us to do. We must well, destroy. Well, you know, we're all about fulfilling prophecy here. Well, they yeah. are. <laughs> no, we're not. No, we are, Greg. You and I. I'm all about prophecy. And Brenda, was, too. Was this our prophecy to, to end the show? Nostradamus <laughs> predicted this was going to be the final episode. Yes. It's one of the last stages before the four horsemen. <laughs> <laughs> and there ended the law offices of Quibble, Squabble, and Micar. That was, and that was one of, of the frogs. That was one of John's fever dreams. The serpents rised out of the the Columbia River and devoured the bridge. And ten cities will arise in a city by the river. No, that's where that's that's where the true Antichrist is. He's in. Well, I think you're going to talk about right Ted now. Nugent again. No, and Ted we... Nugent shall do a wango tango upon the world, upon the land, <laughs> and the right, cities guys. will feel intensities. Ten Let's... cities will feel intensities. We shall not drag this on any further. Do you have any final words to your myriad of fans out there? What a long, strange trip it's been. <laughs> anything profound that you want to get off your chest or anything you want to communicate to anybody who's been watching this? Because we have had steady viewership. It's very small, but steady viewership you know, and listenership the, along the way. So there have been people who have paid attention. You know, so communicate to your fans, guys. What would you like to say to them? Our most loyal listener is my 
my brother-in-law Ray, who I still consider my brother-in-law, even though my sister divorced him. So what do you but want to say to Ray? I want to say, Ray, I'm sorry. I hope you find another podcast to fill your life with joy. And I know it's kind of sudden, but uh, I hope you find there's better podcasts out there, Ray. Trust me. Like the dollop. Yeah. And word bubbles. And those are the only word two bubble. we're going to find out about. Word bubbles. Word, word bubbles. Bubbles. balloons is actually terrible, but. <laughs> The guy's a fucking moron, but he always has great guests on, so I get to hear them talk. And he, all his questions are idiotic. He's like, shut the fuck up. So um, I guess my, my, my last words would be, uh, Ray, if you're listening, I get it. I, I, <laughs> I'm assuming that this happened recently, or maybe it's been a long time. But you know, a few years ago. Two years. Hey, you know, I'm always looking for somebody to talk to going through it myself. So <laughs> I, can, I can turn you on to some other podcasts and probably better than your ex-brother-in-law. Uh, number two, um, you know, hey, happy hour news team. I'm there for you on Thursday nights. I mean, most nights I'm just sitting here listening to stuff on YouTube anyway. So I'll be tuning in. And, uh, you know, if you need any sort of homeless camp reporting, uh, I'm, I'm close. It's, it's only a few so steps you're gonna, away. So you're going to force, yourself, office. You're gonna force yeah. yourself to listen to the happy hours news team every Thursday? I is know. I, I, I literally, dude, when I, was fly, <laughs> when I was I was flying out here, it was a Thursday. I almost missed my flight because I had pulled out my laptop. I was at, I think it was at the Denver airport. <laughs> and I was like interacting with them because it was their Thursday night. That's when their show was live. And I'm interacting. And all of a sudden I looked up and I'm like, fuck. And I had to go and I like get there. And the lady was just giving me, she's like, are you Brendan Haggerty? I'm like, yes. And she's like, well, you better get your ass on the plane. And I was like, okay. Were they paging you for like an hour? Like saying Brendan Haggerty. Please yeah, but I had, my, I had my headphones yeah, yeah. on because I was listening to the show. <laughs> So yeah, she's like, we've been paging you. And I'm like, I I'm sorry. I just, I don't, you want to slap me? I'm sorry. Can I get on the plane? I got to go. I, I'm having a rough day. Let me tell you. So anyway. So everyone who listens to our show and might be sad we're leaving, listen to Happy Hour News team. They're still going. Yes. And they will have more exciting episodes as they get fuller, more and more snowed in in North Dakota. Yeah, they because, will. Uh, this is like going to be prime listening time to the Happy Hour News team because. Yes. Yeah. They can't go out hunting in this time of year unless it's they're about hunting to, for it's snow about wolves. To get, it's good about it's about to get weird in North Dakota, I'm sure. Yes. All right. So what do I have to say to everybody listening? Thank you very much for this uh, very interesting journey that has happened for the last nearly two and a half years. I'm sorry it has ended this way, but you know, you fuckers have never really engaged with us anyway. So if you really wanted things to last longer, you could have sent messages to our website. You could have emailed me. You could, have, us. you could have watched the live stream on YouTube every week and commented. You didn't, most of you. The ones who did, we appreciate you the most. And that's why we mentioned Happy Our News Team the most, because they were the most giving and caring of all of our listeners and viewers regardless of Greg's siblings. And uh, the fact is, is that we do appreciate everybody who did listen. We're still surprised the fact that there were more than two out there who did. Um, we may do episodes in the future. We'll still be having an account on Anchor, so it'll still get published through an RSS feed. Like I said, I may still do um, specialized YouTube videos. If anybody's interested in ones to do, yeah, let me know. The email, as it's always been, is qsblawoffices at gmail.com. That's qsblawoffices at gmail.com. You the website. can continue not to send us emails, even though right. the show's That is correct. <laughs> you know, I want to thank all of the um, people from a couple of years ago in the, in the Far East and in Third World countries that put all the fake reviews on for us and made us in the top 2% of podcasts in the world. So I appreciate those folks who were hired to say things about us that even though they had never listened to our podcast. So thank you guys for that. Me. That made for a couple of really fun episodes of the show. Um, I want to thank Greg and Brendan very, very much for putting up with me through this entire time, because I know I can be a little bit of a dick and an asshole on occasion. Yeah. 
and uh, refuse to take ownership for any of that. So that fuck them both. And so, <laughs> but either way, I still thank them for having been here. Um, I want to thank my wife for being in the other room every time I did this episode while she only heard what I had to say and God knows what was going through her head with a lot of that. I want to thank TikTok for banning us a couple of times because that made a couple of interesting episodes. I want to thank all of our guests that we've ever had, regardless of Brendan and Greg's horrible, horrible rudeness towards you if you weren't what they were their cup of tea. I appreciated you at the very least. We I want to thank the pub- after they left. We, we I want to thank. I want to thank the. I want to thank the publicists who gave us guests, who gave us people to talk to. Really appreciate you guys. Um, yes. You know, perhaps that relationship could be started again some other way in the future. I'm not sure. I have no idea what the future holds for any of us. I know that Greg will never be doing this again. Um, Brendan I will. That. I said every few months, if you feel like it, we'll do one. We'll have bring back the band. Get the band right. back. To- it'll be all on your shoulders greg it's sure. entirely up to you because you were the one who wanted to to, to end so yeah, yeah. but they're you know, just so it'll be people. so it'll be it'll be up to you it'll be totally up to your mood to determine I'll if t- yeah i'll say if you guys yeah. feel like doing one yeah when yeah and you'll be res- and you'll be responsible for the sponsor and you'll be responsible for sure. a guest as I'll well Think and you'll it. be responsible for for actually producing it and editing it afterwards and for putting it onto YouTube. Oh, I can't do that. So I guess we'll never, you will never hear us again. That's the end of the show. This is the last one. <laughs> anyway, Greg, you quit so easily. It's just, it's just sad. You're like unwilling to learn. It's easy. Unwilling to learn things. Anyway. Regardless, I want to thank everybody again very much for having listened to us all this time. Um, and that is uh, the law offices of Quibble, Squabble, and Bicker. We're signing out. Goodbye, my friends. Forever. Stay, stay squabbly. The world <laughs> needs more squabbly. Your consultation with the law offices of Quibble, Squabble, and Bicker has ended. You may pay your retainer at www.qsblaw.org. Please exit to the right of the water cooler and grab a candy from the front desk. We hope to see you again soon, but you need to leave now. I said leave. Why don't they ever listen? Get out. Get out.